Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Always a pleasure to talk to all my future CSENs and CCNAs out there. And today I've got a three-part video practice exam for you I call One of These Things Just Doesn't Belong Here, or maybe two. I'm going to show you a board here in just a moment with three commands, and I've got three questions about those commands, and then we'll take a look at the answers on live Cisco routers. So let's go ahead and get to that board. The commands I'm looking at are router OSPF1, router EIGRP1, and router RIP1. Of those three commands, first off, assuming the config mode is correct, excuse me, assuming the config mode is correct, which of these are legal commands? Second question, of the remaining, what does that number represent exactly? And I don't use uppercase too often, so very important detail here. And then the third question, of the remaining, again, for which could that number determine whether an adjacency will form with downstream routers? So a three-part question. First off, we got to know which ones are legal. Then we got to know of the remaining, what exactly that number means. And then we got to know whether that will impact an adjacency or not. Just a very quick word before we get to the answers. I want to thank you for putting us well over the 7,000 mark on our video boot camps on Udemy. And right now, it's an amazing special. You really need to join us in this. You can join my CCNA video boot camp for only $44. That's actually an over 60% savings. And I'll show you exactly how to do it. You're going to see this screen. Just click redeem it. As you can see, we've got over 1,500 students in there now. 55 five-star reviews, which is pretty darn good. And we'll put Bulldog 60 in. And you will see the price drop to $44. So no tricks there. You definitely want to jump in and be a part of that course. The URL I show you here, it shows you all the courses. Some free, some paid, and all great. So let's hop back to the question. First off, which of these are legal commands? Well, with router OSPF1, we're fine, as we're going to see in a moment on live equipment. Router EIGRP1, we're fine. But what about router RIP1? What do you think about that one? Let's do a config T and do a router RIP1. Remember that caret doesn't just show you that you have invalid input. It shows you where it is. So what this is telling us is this command is perfectly fine all the way up to this number. That's a really good detail to keep in mind. And you can see that actually if we use iOS help here, we have no other options. Router rip is the command. So router rip is indeed an illegal command. And going back to the questions for a moment, the legal commands are router OSPF1 and router EIGRP1. Now of OSPF and EIGRP, dealing with those, what exactly does that number mean? Well, let's get that back. That was not subliminal advertising. That was just me hitting the wrong button. Sometimes a banana, etc. Okay, with OSPF, we're looking at a process ID. It is a process number. With EIGRP, we're looking at an autonomous system number, generally referred to as an AS number. So while the range is exactly the same according to iOS help, OSPF uses a process ID, and EIGRP uses an autonomous system number. So is this just tomato, tomato? I mean, does that matter to downstream routers? Well, for one of them it does, and also one of them it doesn't matter. With EIGRP, potential neighbors have to agree on that autonomous system number. So if we put router EIGRP 100, this router is not going to be able to form an EIGRP adjacency with another router unless it's using the same AS number. With OSPF, it does not matter. So if we use router OSPF1 here and then a downstream neighbor has router OSPF5 or a potential neighbor, as long as they agree on certain other things, which I cover in other videos, they'll become adjacent. But that doesn't happen because of the process ID and it doesn't not happen because of the process ID. That process ID is what we call locally significant only. It's not even advertised to the router. The reason we have so many, uh, well, we won't have that many processes, but the reason you might want to keep OSPF processes separate, just an extra word here, is that OSPF processes, separate processes, do not exchange routes automatically. We would have to configure that. So you may have a powerhouse router, say as your hub router, and you want to run two instances of OSPF on it and keep the routes and the two processes separate. That is why you would make additional processes. 
So a little extra info there, but again, going over these answers, which are legal commands, the OSPF and EIGR commands were legal. Uh, with RIP, you're never going to have a number there because we don't even have adjacencies in RIP. We don't have that. Now, of the remaining, which were OSPF and EIGRP, with OSPF, that's the process ID. With EIGRP, it's the AS number. And as far as the adjacency goes, in EIGRP, potential neighbors must agree on the autonomous system number but potential OSPF neighbors do not have to agree on the process ID. Thanks for watching today's video boot camp. A lot of info there, so make sure to watch it more than once. I'm Chris Bryant. Thanks for making TBA part of your CCNA success story.